Let's get more on this. Uh, let's bring in Afsal Ashraf, who's a visiting fellow at the Nottingham University. He joins us now live from London. Afsal, good to have you on the show. Uh, now, we're just hearing officials say that Daesh's uh, defeat in eastern Syria is, is imminent. Uh, what sort of challenges uh, in the area do you feel that they can face with this sort of last enclave falling? Well, I think there are several challenges. Uh, one, of course, is the challenge that uh, uh, the enclaves may well fall, but many of the Daesh fighters and supporters uh, will uh, disperse. In fact, many of them have already dispersed uh, throughout Syria, throughout Iraq, and uh, to other countries. Uh, so that's one challenge. The other challenge, of course, is what happens to Syria um, or in those areas that are being, uh, let's say, occupied by forces that uh, West, the Western-backed coalition has put in there. Uh, the, the YPG is just one of those forces. What happens to them and what is their long-term future going to be like? Uh, so we will get a transformation of this conflict from what is being uh, put forward as a counter-terrorism conflict to a, uh, a, a more of an insurgency conflict involving possibly uh, other countries such as Turkey, uh, YPG groups and Syrian uh, army and, and backers such as the Russians uh, and possibly the Iranians as well being involved. So this, this conflict is going to transform from that point of view. And then there are other sort of sideline factors, uh, some of which you've already started to discuss, and that is what happens to those individuals that either go back to the countries from which they came, mainly the US and uh, Europe, um, also to those who go um, not back to their countries but to other so-called safe havens. Uh, many uh, ISIS or Daesh fighters have sought sanctuary in places like Afghanistan uh, and Central Asia, far, the Far East and North Africa. And there, of course, they will continue in a different way their violent revolution and they pose uh, a different form, uh, a much more severe form of threat to those countries and beyond. Okay, so you say the nature of the conflict so will, will transform. Fair enough. But I want to sort of uh, go back into uh, this issue of the foreign fighters. Uh, you said that some are likely to disperse across the country. Uh, we've just reported that at least 150 or so foreign fighters have been handed over to Iraq. We've been reporting two individuals who are not welcome back into their country. Um, Hoda Mutana in the United States, who's from the state of Alabama, as well as Baguma Shamima, who is sort of in limbo right now because the Home Office has basically stripped her of her citizenship. Uh, what could happen to these fighters and uh, the other people that have defected? Uh, this seems to be possibly another big challenge in this new page. Okay, so um, the, the, the link between these two issues, the one of foreign fighters and the transformation of the conflict, is that these foreign fighters are attracted to areas of poor or no governance. And where you have a, a conflict, even in a transformed state, you get areas of poor governance and these uh, terrorist organizations are brilliant at exploiting those. So we can't completely walk away from that issue. But to answer your specific question about um, foreign fighters, uh, what happens to them, um, what we're seeing played out in the two examples you give in the US and the UK is that there are two uh, parallel issues here, ways of looking at this problem. One is the legal issue, and here uh, citizenship, the right to citizenship and the rights to deprive people of citizenship is being debated. Um, and if you look at it purely from the, uh, the legal perspective, uh, most uh, people will say that um, the, the governments involved are not uh, playing by their own rules. On the other hand, the governments involved have to look at this issue through the security prism as well. And in terms of security prism, the big problem is that um, you can never be sure that um, anybody who comes back from this organization, having been a member of it, having uh, perhaps supported it in one way or another, is going to give up their ideas. And those ideas are very dangerous in that uh, those ideas include the murder and the killing of civilians uh, in the countries where they live or elsewhere. And so uh, to, in order to mitigate that, is an, there is an enormous burden of um, cost and time on the state to protect the majority of citizens from these very few people that threaten them. So there's okay, yeah. going to be a real problem uh, uh, comparing these two arguments. All right, Afsal Ashraf, thank you for that great analysis and uh, putting these latest developments into perspective. Thank you.